to Encounter the Real Jesus. My name is Christine Coleman. And guess what? Today is a show like none other we have done before. We are going to talk about Jesus and you. We are going to talk about Jesus and his bride. The Lord told me, I am looking for candidates, people who are willing to go in a deep relationship with me, people who will not settle for a childish relationship. And today is your invitation to be the bride of Christ. We will look at things such as, what does it mean to be the bride of Christ? And before you know it, you will be in love with Jesus. Don't even think about problems today. We're gonna focus on the bridegroom king. I'll be right back. My friend, do you know the real Jesus who laid down his life for you, loves no matter your race, gender, or past sin? Do you know the father who protects, the shepherd who guides, Jesus who carries you through trials, catches your tears, cries with you, and laughs with you? Welcome to Encounter the Real Jesus. You will never be the same. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We welcome you, Jesus. You are our bridegroom king in 2004. You revealed to me as my bridegroom king. And it was the first time ever I made my vows to Jesus. So, back it up. We're going to talk about this. And I'm going to tell you everything the Lord told me about being the bride of Christ. Of course, if the time allows. You know, the bride of Christ, we hear the word in the Bible, but what does it really mean? In Revelation 19, verse 7, it says, Let us rejoice and be God and give the glory to God, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Let us rejoice. I don't know about you, but I love weddings. I love weddings. And so this scripture is talking about a marriage. It's talking also about the lamb. Who is the groom? We know that the lamb is Jesus Christ who died for us to redeem us. But it's also talking the bride. So, the Lord told me, becoming the bride of Christ is a journey. You know, our first accepting Jesus, where, when we call it being born again, is the first step to become the bride. From there, we come out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. We come into the kingdom of his son. And then if we are faithful, obeying the word of God, faithful in a prayer, a journey of depth begins. Even if we continue to seek God and seeking him alone, longing for nothing but him, he draw us near to him. And this is where the bridal relationship takes place. In 2013, Jesus uh, was visiting our church. It is around Rosh Hashanah, so I decided to ask him, what do you think about Rosh Hashanah? He was uh, so excited. He said, Rosh Hashanah is my wedding day. And through the conversation, the Lord guided us into a ceremony where on Rosh Hashanah of 2013, 
we said our vows, even married Jesus. I will read you from my notes. The man had questions for him regarding men being brides. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. The Lord spoke to us and he says, tell the man that physical appearance doesn't make a bride beautiful to me or a bride to me. So when we talk about the bride of Christ, forget about the earth standard. Forget about male and female because we are all one in Christ. The Lord continued to say, male or female, it doesn't matter how I consider someone as a bride. It's humbling for many to be my bride because on earth they are here superior in authority to women. But I want the men to let go of those standards they hold on the earth. There are not the standards I have set for them. Tell those men who do not feel like uh, the bride yet to relate to me in a bridal way to look to say the vows. We were asking him about many single vows as brides. To look at these vows they make with me, just like a contract between brothers, a business deal that binds us together, but one that is made out of kinship and love. When you say your vows to Jesus, these are contracts they complete and solidify the intimate and the friendship they have with me. Of course, Jesus always is humorous. He made us laugh when he said, tell them, I created many first. Many should connect more intimately with me, more than women, but you know, not everybody is dead. So my friend, it's true, we are the bride of Christ when we have gotten into the relationship where we seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. In the book of James 2.23, it talks Abraham and how he became the friend of God. The Hebrew scholar has it that the relationship that Abraham had with God was at 50-50. Today, I want to encourage you to not let that relationship be a weak relationship. Pursue God. You know that Jesus also pursue you, but don't let him pursue you only. Let it be 50 and 50. The Bible says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. In the Bible, there are people that we can look at to see the bridal relationship that they had with Jesus. For example, Esther and John, the beloved, the disciple who was always in the bosom of the Father. After the break, we're going to come and look at this in depth. But I know it's God's desire to draw you in a too intimate relationship. Wouldn't that be a great thing if we were so close to Jesus? I can see for many of you, it's your desire to be close to Jesus. But often a time, there is that distance. That's why me and my team are here today. That you call us. We're going to bring those words down. We're going to pray and bring you closer and teach you how to be closer to Jesus. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the bride and the bridegroom king. I'll be right back with you. World Watch Monitor, 
tells us that in 2018, more than 8,000 churches were closed in Rwanda following the government directive. A Christian nation was turned secular overnight. As a survivor of the Rwanda and DRC Congo genocides, wars and dictatorships, Reverend Christine Coleman shares her story in SOS, Rwanda's 30-year apocalypse, sounding the alarm to reveal the reality of ongoing persecution, martyrdoms, and killings, yet hidden to most of the outside world. It is a world of dictatorship, great deception, persecution, war against the saints and people of good faith that has seen the martyrdom of three bishops and nine priests in one day, and the recent martyrdom of Kizito Mihigo, the most prominent Rwandan artist and gospel singer. If nothing is done, what is happening in Rwanda can happen anywhere in the West. This is a must-read book to understand the workings of Antichrist spirits, ideology, and philosophy. Get your copy today. In 2013, 12 prayer warriors from Brazing Holy Fire Church who prayed together nightly had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. On the first day of the encounters, Jesus gave them a letter from the throne of God saying, My dear children, I am coming very, very soon, and I need you to sprint and to fly faster more than ever before. Take my message out to the people faster than the eagle soars and faster than a gazelle runs. This is a very powerful letter, super, super exciting. It was addressed to all the members of Blessing the Fire Church and everyone who will partner with our ministry. Today, I invite you to partner with me financially and we will have this letter rushed to your home. Also, during this encounter, the road Jesus gave to Pastor Christine, an end-time friar known as the Jesus Friar, in which the road told her of four things which will take place soon. Please contact our ministry and we will marry you the Jesus Friar at no cost. Send your gift to Blazing Holy Fire, 10940 South Parker Road, number 785. Parker, Colorado, 80134. Welcome, welcome back, my friend. Hallelujah, we are talking about the bride and the bridegroom king, Jesus. The Lord is wanting us to have that deep relationship with him. The relationship that cannot be broken by anything, not by the storm, not by the cross that we carry, but the relationship that is so strong that we go to him, we tell him everything, and he comes to us, and he tells us everything. Have you ever erased the tears of Jesus? Have you ever danced with Jesus? Like how a husband dances with his bride. He wants that relationship. In the Bible, when we look, there are those people who enjoyed a great intimacy with God. I don't know about you, but I want to be close to him. And he promised me that those who pursue, he will do everything he can to bring them to him closer and closer each day. As we saw in the first uh, session, there was this one disciple by the name of John who was intimate with Jesus more than the others. In John 13, it says that, verse 23, that he was reclining on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. We know that it was John. And when you continue to read, in verse 25, because Peter was asking him, uh, can we know who? who is going to betray. Uh, he, leaning back thus on Jesus' bosom, said to him, Lord, who is it? The person 
who puts away everything to be close to Jesus is the bride. The bride works with God. The bride get to enjoy intimacy with God and even know the information that other people did not know. How come that there are people who know the things before they happen? They know the future. How come that there are people who know what other people don't know? Even at this table, during the last supper, Peter doesn't know. Nobody else knows. But because of the close relationship with Jesus, John, who is always very close to the Father, he gets to get that information. I believe if you were to be working at the White House, being a senior advisor to President Trump, you will know more than we know. So there is this advantage of being the bride of Jesus. Of course, when you are the bride of Christ, when you decide to follow him and not compromise, hell is going to break loose. There will be division. There will be persecution. But no matter what, God is telling us, tell my people that I test every bride of mine. Hallelujah. He is the real Jesus. He wants to know that the love you have for him is for real. So who is this John? This John is a disciple who stood with Jesus at least. He tried to stand with Jesus to the very end. Just like in the normal life, you will know the real friends when you go through trials. Those people who stand with you and they don't judge you and they don't leave you alone, they are real friends. So John never gave up on Jesus. But he stood by Jesus' side to the very end. John is a disciple who had the heart for Jesus. That's why you see him risking his life being nearby the cross. No matter what you have to go through to be that intimate bride, cling to Jesus right now. There are some of us who are going through the storm. But I will not let the storm push me away from Jesus. The more the devil tries to separate us from Jesus, the more we are going to run to him. The more we will cling and embrace him. The Lord told me about John and he said, John held on to me as the beloved. And I, Jesus, held unto him as my beloved. Oh, John, he was a bride to me, and he still is. That's what the Lord said to me. As I told you, becoming the bride of Christ, it's a journey. There is a time where you will go through trials, but keep holding on, being uh, when you're tested, overcome. Hold on to Jesus. So in 2013, when the Lord visited us, he guided us into the journey to be, to say the vows. And I tell you, when you write that contract with God, I did it in 2004. I did not even know. But it has changed my life forever. It's like something that is always in the face of the enemy. And when he tries to come and touch you, your husband, your bridegroom, King Jesus, he fights for you. The relationship is a very, very strong. It talks about it in the book of Hosea. And I will give you the scripture. Hosea chapter 2. 19, I will betroth you to me forever. 
Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice. You see, God vows to be faithful in loving kindness and in compassion. My church, we have seen Jesus coming and vowing as we vow back. If you want to hear our vows to Jesus, please give me a call. We're going to give you the link and we're going to let you listen how the Lord speaks and when he vowed to us. We're going to take a moment and worship. When we come right back, we'll pray with you. Thank you. Jesus is so sweet. You are watching this show because he's calling you to become his bride. In Hosea 2, 19 and 20, I betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in loving kindness and in compassion. I will betroth you to me in a faithfulness. Then you will know the Lord. This is a journey when he sees that you're ready for love. You cannot marry Jesus unless you are in love with him. And guess what? He does the job of courtship, of coming to you and bringing you close, and he speaks to you tenderly. Do not refuse him. Today we are going to pray, Father, hallelujah, as I pray, please lift up your hands. I lift up those who are watching, and they feel the calling to be the bride that you Prepare them, Lord Jesus. And that even you guide them into that perfect union where they reach oneness. This has nothing to do with their problems. You will take care of our problems, but you want your bride. You want her so bad. And so now I pray that you move on the hearts of your brides and that you confirm to them, O oh God, that yes, they are to draw the vows, they are to say those vows between them and you. And I ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will guide 
my friend, that deep relationship with Jesus, you will never be the same. If you feel the Lord talking you to become the bride, call me. We're going to show you our vows. And also you are welcome to write your vows. And we will say them and we will send you the vows back because Jesus would love to vow to you. We close today, but remember, Jesus loves you. No matter what you are going through, smile and be happy. World Watch Monitor tells us that in 2018, more than 8,000 churches were closed in Rwanda following the government directive. A Christian nation was turned secular overnight. As a survivor of the Rwanda and DRC Congo genocides, wars and dictatorships, Reverend Christine Coleman shares her story in SOS, Rwanda's 30-year apocalypse, sounding the alarm to reveal the reality of ongoing persecution, martyrdoms, and killings, yet hidden to most of the outside world. It is a world of dictatorship, great deception, persecution, war against the saints and people of good faith that has seen the martyrdom of three bishops and nine priests in one day, and the recent martyrdom of Kizito Mihigo, the most prominent Rwandan artist and gospel singer. If nothing is done, what is happening in Rwanda can happen anywhere in the West. This is a must-read book to understand the workings of Antichrist spirits, ideology, and philosophy. Get your copy today. In 2013, 12 prayer warriors from Brazing Holy Fire Church who prayed together nightly had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. On the first day of the encounters, Jesus gave them a letter from the throne of God saying, My dear children, I am coming very, very soon, and I need you to sprint and to fly faster more than ever before. Take my message out to the people faster than the eagle soars, and faster than a gazelle runs. This is a very powerful letter, super, super exciting. It was addressed to all the members of Blessing the Holy Fire Church and everyone who will partner with our ministry. Today, I invite you to partner with me financially, and we will have this letter rushed to your home. Also, during this encounter, the road Jesus gave to Pastor Christine, an end time friar known as the Jesus Friar, in which the road told her of four things which will take place soon. Please contact our ministry and we will marry you the Jesus Friar at no cost. Send your gift to Blazing Holy Fire, 10940 South Parker Road, number 785. Parker, Colorado, 80134. Encounter the Real Jesus is brought to you by Christine Coleman and Blazing Holy Fire Church for healing, deliverance, and intimacy with God. Join our Sunday 7 p.m. revival services, 9250 East Bellevue Avenue, Greenwood Village, Colorado, 80111. For mobile giving, text GIVE to 720-586-4390. Visit theblazingholyfire.com for more options. Till next time, Jesus says, smile and be happy.